everybody! Welcome back to Wunu, your weekly Universal news and updates. I'm Wunu, and I go over everything that's happened in Universal Studios Orlando Resort weekly. So if you're going on a vacation or just want to know news, you can know everything that's happened in the past seven days. Anyways, let's get straight into it, because Mardi Gras has been announced, and I have news for it throughout the entire video. So just as some basic Mardi Gras announcements that came out. Universal would announce the concert lineup for February and March of 2022 for Mardi Gras. In February, on the 5th, Sugar Ray will be performing. On the 12th, Diana Ross will be performing. On the 9th, Bare Naked Ladies will be performing. On the 20th, Styx will be performing. On the 26th, John Patty will be performing. In March, on the 5th, LL Cool J featuring DJ Z Trip will be performing. On the 6th, Marshmallow will be performing. On the 12th, Lee Bryce will be performing. On the 13th, Becky G will be performing. On the 18th, Khaled will be performing. On the 19th, Seal will be performing. On the 20th, Gavin DeGraw will be performing. On the 25th, The Revivalists will be performing. On the 26th, Ginny Allen will be performing. On the 27th, Jason Derulo will be performing. And geez, this is an amazing lineup for concerts this year. Tons of amazing musicians and just crazy talent. A few of these are returning artists to Mardi Gras, and a few of them are new. So what musician do you want to see perform? You can tell me in the comments if you'd like to. Along with the concert, more details on the event would be announced. Similar to last year, food booths will be placed around the studio's park, serving food all around the world. The booths will be for USA, which is New Orleans, Italy, Floribean, Fuzon, Brazil, Southeast Asia, India, and Central America. Also, unlike last year, the parade for Mardi Gras will return, and with six new floats, it will be back. However, something that's different from previous years is that there will be no parade on April 1st, 2nd, and 8th for whatever reasons. Also, Float riding to throw beads off of the floats to the people in the parade is back, and there are going to be some limits and restrictions to that, but they're going to be announced at a later date. It would also be hinted that the food booths will be able to be viewed on the Universal mobile app. And of course, Mardi Gras dancers and stilt walkers will be out in the day to interact with guests as they are every year, which is one of the best parts of Mardi Gras. Also, the theme for the Mardi Gras Tribute Store would be announced. It will be a float factory. The four rooms will show the process of building a Mardi Gras parade float, and the store will feature an actual sized parade float, what I'm assuming will be in the final room. Universal would also implement a new system similar to the tasting lanyards that appeared last year that let you use credits to get food. They will sell you a card for $65 that allows you to spend $75 on food, or a $120 card that will get you $150 worth of food. The cards are sold at the food booths, they work at all of the Mardi Gras booths, along with all food locations at Islands of Adventure, Universal Studios Florida, Volcano Bay, and CityWalk. They also never expire. Annual pass and other discounts can also be used on top of the card for food and non-alcoholic beverages. There is also no limit on how many you can buy. Now that is an amazing deal. It's basically spend $65, get $15 free, or spend $120, get $30 free. They never expire, can be used anywhere, and it's pretty much free food in a way. Into the actual parks in Universal Studios Florida, in Production Central, the opening area. The day after Shrek 40 closed, which it closed permanently last week on Sunday, Minions-themed construction walls would be placed around the dead attraction. This is so far following the rumors that have been around for a few years that the replacement will be a walkthrough Villains Calm themed attraction. When paired with random promotional pictures of bananas throughout the park being posted by Universal on social media. The designs on the walls show a minion skateboarding, one looking at a fire hydrant as a reference to the Minions movie, and some general minion themed designs. Universal would also place permits for the destruction of 4D and interior features in Shrek's building. 
They would also fill out a notice of commencement with Orange County, where they are, for using Holovis Inc., an interactive screen technology business in the building, which matches up further with the Villains Con themed attraction rumor. Also, just as a reminder, though Shrek D Though Shrek 4D is permanently closed, you can still meet Donkey, Fiona, and Shrek at the meet and greet across the path. Also later, some small details like the Gingy Express sign and some shield decor will be removed from Shrek 4D's building's facade. This is just a small part of the demolition process that is going to probably become a lot more severe as time goes on. And on Sunday, the wait time sign would be removed from the attraction. In Central Park, which is the small area walk through to get to Kids Zone, a massive stage for Rock the Universe has been set up over the past few weeks. Rock the Universe is a Christian music event that happens annually at Universal, excluding 2020, and it's coming back, which is why this stage is being implemented. In New York, the section with The Tonight Show, at last, the Christmas tree would be removed that was there for the holiday event. With this, Christmas decor is officially gone from Universal Studios Orlando Resort that was placed for the event months ago. Also, a new Loungefly Hello Kitty themed snack purse would become available in the Hello Kitty store that as I'm saying this and realizing is actually in Hollywood and not in New York. So, I guess that's actually my first thing for Hollywood, where I have another update. The Williams of Hollywood Prop Shop, a store here, would receive even more of the Halloween Horror Nights Scarecrow stock scarecrows. These are prop scarecrows that were used as a scavenger hunt during Halloween Horror Nights, and they're extremely expensive, but cool things to look at. In San Francisco, where Fast and Furious is, the Nashville Hot Chicken food truck would survive the holiday event and would likely also serve for Mardi Gras. Just as some context, this is a temporary food truck that was brought for Halloween Horror Nights a long time ago, but it seems it has and will be sticking around for at least Mardi Gras and maybe even some more time. It's relatively popular, so it's cool to see it surviving. In Diagon Alley, in Sugar Plum Sweet Shop, a new clotted raspberry fudge can be found. It is also available at Honey Dukes in Hogsmeade. In Men in Black in the back of studios, permits have been filed for the demolition of the Fear Factor Live Stadium. Fear Factor is not been a show in a long time, and with Halloween Horror Nights leaving, the stadium is no longer being used. A file for its demolition has now been filed, and it's rumored that this is going to become an extension of Diagon Alley. In Kid Zone, a new ET or the extraterrestrial in Basket Plush will become available in the ET gift shop called ET's Toy Shop. He is connected to the basket by a small Velcro strand, and he is amazingly cute. And also in SpongeBob Store Pants, the SpongeBob Store, it now sells two new Magic Candle Company candles, which are theme park scented candles being South Tiki Trail and Surfside Retreat, which were previously only available at Endless Summer Resort. At Islands of Adventure, at Port of Entry, where you enter, the Island Market and Export Candy Shop would receive a new pressed coin machine that features coins for the DeLorean from Back to the Future, Bumblebee, King Kong, the Extraterrestrial, or to E.T., Woody Woodpecker, Jaws, the studio's logo, and the Velocicoaster. The coins are a dollar a piece, or all eight coins for five dollars. And in Marvel Superhero Island, the Marvel Boutique, a store that had a lot of lounge fly items that temporarily closed and opened a few months ago, has now been removed and repurposed as a character meet and greet. In Isla Nublar, also known as Jurassic Park, the Jurassic Park River Adventure will close on Monday for its annual winter refurbishment. It is expected to reopen on the 28th of this month. 
and it most likely will, just with some fresher water and better paint. Found in this land and around the parks, a new Mosasaurus plush is now sold. In the Lost Continent, Poseidon's Fury, the large temple, would be largely repainted on the front of its facade, being a new mossy green. Dr. Samadhi, a frequently reused Mardi Gras prop that's made its way around Mardi Gras and Halloween Horror Nights reappearing every year for multiple years, is now sitting on the Tomb Carrier in the All Hallows' Eve Boutique. However, this cart is now a collection of his items instead of a Tomb Character. This is Universal's Halloween shop, and it actually looks quite fitting. Also in the boutique, since the Christmas decor has been removed, the fireplace has new demon outlines, skulls have been hung on the walls, and the stockings have been replaced by twiggy embroiderments. And on Saturday, the All Hallows Eve Boutique sign would be changed to be the All Hallows Voodoo Boutique with voodoo dummies on it from Mardi Gras. And inside, the Mardi Gras merchandise is starting to show. This year's theme is Planet Mardi Gras, and that theme is seen in the merchandise. The merchandise includes two new King Gator shirts, a Planet Mardi Gras tumbler, a Planet Mardi Gras magnet, a Planet Mardi Gras drawstring bag, a louder, wilder, spicier crop top and hat, a Mardi Gras tank top, knee-high socks, Mardi Gras masks, and Mardi Gras light-up necklaces. Over in the amazing land of Seuss Landing, Gertrude McFuzz's fine feathered finery now sells new Grinch slippers that are really cute, really fuzzy, and actually look super comfortable. And in City Walk, NBC Bar and Grill will be hosting a Super Bowl watching event and had signage out front about it. Mardi Gras food will also be coming to City Walk along with the parks when the Mardi Gras event starts and it would be announced that limited food in places such as Fudu Donuts, Tucson's Chocolate Emporium and Savory Feast Kitchen, and Pat O'Brien's will appear. Also, on Thursday night, the studio store here would also receive new environmentally sustainable teas that say good vibes, good times, and together we're universal. And the Olympic rings from the Tour of the Rings would appear in front of the studio's arches to help promote the 2022 Winter Olympics for a few days. However, they're gone now. Over in Volcano Bay, it would be announced that due to inclement weather, the park would be closed on Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, as it's getting rainier and windier in Florida. As for some general news around the park, as of Monday, January 10th, in compliance with new Florida state mask and vaccination standards, Universal now requires employees to be vaccinated or be tested for COVID weekly and wear a mask while working. A vaccination card is required and cannot be confirmed by your own word. Also, due to its closure, Shrek 4D is no longer on park maps. As for some interesting stories, a court report of a crime at Universal would come out that was for a crime that happened about a month ago. The crime was committed by a 31-year-old named Ryan Welsh from New Jersey. He was charged with grand theft, a third-degree felony. On December 6th, he would approach a Harry Potter display tree and take four ornaments, one for each Hogwarts house. He would hide them in a merchandise bag that he already had. He would go back to the tree and steal another set. He would continue by going to a phone case section and putting a Death Eater and Ravenclaw phone case in his bag. He then returned to the ornament tree and took two more of those. He then went to Harry Potter themed socks and put several pairs in his bag. He then went back to the tree and took more ornaments. After that, he went by the Harry Potter scrapbooks 
and would conceal one under his arm. Finally, he would take a Harry Potter throw blanket and leave. What a Potterhead. Security quickly stopped him and took him for questioning. He admitted to stealing the items, a total of $827 of them, and for stealing other items from the park. He will be brought to trial and will be tried in court on January 18th, 2022. In an odd coincidence, a woman from London named Mary Anderson, at the age of 40, would also be charged with grand theft in early December. It was said that she, another woman, a man, and three minors pushed their way through the turnstile and into the parks without scanning or buying tickets. After being briefly stopped by security, they would continue into the parks. When questioned, the mother stated she wasn't in the parks with the kids when they went in, but surveillance videos would say otherwise. One thing is for sure, Universal is not going to allow a woman to get away with nearly a thousand dollars of tickets without paying, so we'll see if this story continues. Into some resorts. Mardi Gras food will also be coming to most Universal hotels, so here's their menus. In Lowe's Portofino Bay Hotel, in Trotteria del Porto, they would receive creamy pontina shrimp, which is jumbo shrimp, chorizo sausage, cajun sauce, and creamy polenta, and mass grenade cannoli, which is mixed berry ensalada. The thirsty fish would receive a magari, which is Italian for wish. It was consists of aviation gin, limoncello, limon di Genola cider, and fresh basil. In Splendido Bar and Grill, it will receive a mojito lampone, which is Italian for raspberry. It includes aviation gin, limoncello, lime di Gione cider, and fresh basil. In Hard Rock Hotel, the Velvet Bar will receive a Beta Amber Ale Shrimp, which is Gulf Shrimp lightly sautéed in some Creole garlic butter, and a Beta Amber Ale, served with sliced fresh bread. In the kitchen, there will be a new Nalines Po'boy, which is a classic piled high with crispy fried shrimp, lettuce, tomatoes, pickle, and Creole mayo served on New Orleans' very own Laden Hammer bread. And in Beach Club, they will receive a Mufaleta Sliders, which is Central Grocery Store spicy olive salad topped with mozzarella, ham, salami, and provolone cheese, all on classics in Lowe's Royal Pacific Resort. The Island's Dining Room will receive new King Cake Pancakes, which are lemon and powdered sugar glazed spiced walnuts on pancakes. And Orchard Court Lounge and Sushi Bar will receive a new orchid, which is Roku Gin, Sweet Potato Shachu, Mint, Cucumber, and Absinthe. And the Tuk Tuk Market will receive a chocolate bomb, where you can choose from chocolate and caramel with spiced pecan and Mardi Gras purple, green, and gold decor, s'mores, or cookie and cream. At Lowe's Sapphire Falls Resort, Amasta Cookhouse has new andole sausage and pulled chicken with queso fresca empanada and cajun aioli. And Strongwater Tavern has a new cucumber hurricane twist, which is light rum, lime juice, midori, and sliced cucumber. And New Dutch Trading Company has a traditional king cake. At Universal's Cabana Bay Beach Resort, Galaxy Bowl Restaurant has a new shrimp po'boy with queso fresco empanada cajun aioli. And Lisa's Les Bons Temps Roller Hurricane, which means let the good times roll. It's Bacardi Light Rum, Cruisin' 12 Years Single Barrel Rum, Passion Fruit Puree, Orange Juice, and Grenadine, served in a 32-ounce souvenir Galaxy Ball Cup. At Universal's Adventura Hotel, Bar 17 Bistro has new chicken and dole and shrimp jambalaya, a mini king cake, the hurricane, which is Bacardi Superior Rum, Meyer's Original Dark Rum, Passion Fruit, Tropical and Tropical Juices, 
and Sazerac, which is rye, whiskey, absinthe, simple syrup, and Peychaud's bitters. In Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Surfside Inn and Suites, they will have in Beach Break Cafe a New Orleans barbecue shrimp and dirty rice, and Dockside's bayonets, which are sweet fried pastries with a bourbon caramel sauce and topped with powdered sugar. The Oasis Beach Bar and the Sunset Lounge have something called the Endless Carnival, which is Castillo Silver Rum, Captain Morgan Spiced Rum, Chinola Passion Fruit Liquor, Pineapple Juice, Orange Juice, a pinch of dried blackberries, Pineapple Wedge, and a green sugar rim. And at Universal's Endless Summer Resort, Dockside Inn and Suites, Dockside Pure 8 Market has New Orleans barbecue shrimp and dirty rice, Dockside Bayonets, which are sweet fried pastry with a bourbon caramel sauce and topped with powdered sugar. And the Oasis Beach Bar and the Sunset Lounge have the Endless Carnival, which is Castillo Silver Bun, Captain Morgan Spiced Rum, Chilella Passion Fruit Liquor, Pineapple Juice, Orange Juice, a pinch of dried blackberries, Pineapple Wedge, and a green sugar rim. So that's everything that's happened at Universal Studios Orlando this week. I hope you enjoyed the video, and I hope it's been informational enough. A lot has happened this week, with Mardi Gras being announced, and the aftermath of Shrek, and a whole lot of other stuff, but I hope it was interesting all the way through. If you're here, you're a legend for watching, so thank you, and I hope you have a great trip to Universal next time you go, and with all that said and done, this is Wunu, signing off.